Right here, there's a big old container of Papa Itan. It must be popular because there is a giant cauldron of that stuff right there. On the best ever food review show, it's my mission to seek out the most unique food from around the world. This mission has led me to worms in Vietnam. This is what's gonna be going into our food later. I tried my luck with Flaming Pond in India. Ah! And I even took on fermented stingray in Korea. We're gonna be okay. I'm not gonna be okay. Oh. But none of that compares to what I'll experience today in the Philippines. Exotic foods are always interesting, and the main question is always, why? Every unique food has a unique story that brings us closer to the culture. Whether it started as survival food... Buying like meat or pork mm. or chicken is expensive. They cannot buy it, so the local people in the village go out and buy this in the jungle. Or has some secret health benefits. Ammonia is a So it has a lot of ammonia inside, so it's really good for your health. Today, we're taking on the most exotic foods in Davao. Whoa, there's a lot happening in there. We'll try some Filipino classics taken to the next level. What do you mean, I ate a balut without a chick? Yeah. And work our way up to the kitchen of exotic foods, or what some lovingly refer to as goat poop soup. Are we really gonna eat that? Yeah. Is it really coming from the poop of a goat? So open your mind and open your mouth, because we're going extreme in the Philippines. Today we're starting off in Bangkorohan Market, Davao's epicenter of all things fresh and yummy. Here in the seafood section, they're slicing up tuna belly, tail, and jaw. But we're here for one extra special cut. Tuna is famous for kinilaw, but kinilaw is too basic. I'm gonna show you something more. Oh, jeez. This is a delicacy here. Yeah. Locally, this is called bihut. Big old sacks full of tuna eggs, or roe. But these eggs won't be extracted. Rather, they'll be cooked in the egg sack. Hello, sir. Is this lemme? Lemme. Okay, you said it's yummy. How much is it for these two? 180. 180 per, per kilo. Per kilo. We're paying about a dollar and a half for two pounds. Part of me wants to like grab onto it, but then part of me wants my hands to not smell like that for the rest of my life. So, maybe I'll just not. Whoa, it is. Fleshy, heavy, yeah, like dense. Gets... There's a lot happening in there. You've had it before. Yeah, it's like liver, chicken liver. Oh, I like chicken liver. Yeah. Great. We'll buy it here then. We'll choose one carinderia there. Cook for us. Let's go cook it up. Now that we've got our eggs, we need them cooked. So we're headed to Luz Kinilao, a restaurant famous for its take on the Filipino classic Kinilao. And right now, I can't wait to see how they take on this sack. How are they gonna prepare it? They're gonna wrap it with coconut leaves. Perfect. That's how I would do it too. Wow, I've never seen anything like this. I thought they were gonna wrap it up like in tin foil or something. They just put it on a skewer. They put that on there just so it doesn't fall off because it's so gooey and saggy. Interesting preparation. Look at these beautiful vascular bulges. How long does this grill? 30. 30 minutes. Whoa, that takes a long time. Do you like this one, Lemmy? Yes. You promise? What a moment, 30 minutes, but worth the wait. This is the fish roe, it's kind of the egg sack. If you zoom in on this, it almost looks like a piece of chicken breast. The texture is uncanny, it's so bizarre. I'm just gonna try it plain without the sauce. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm, that is a really interesting, little dry, crumbly, and a hint of fishiness in there. The skin is hard. It does need the sauce because it's a bit dry. I'm gonna drench it in here. A perfect combination mm. of this is rice. This already feels ricey to me. The texture, really interesting. Thick, robust, dense eggs. It soaks up the sauce like a little sponge. A little bit of sour, a little bit of heat. It's quite nice. How many tunas do you think this could have been? One fish. Wow. Two egg sacks. Science. <laughs> Should I be worried about the Papa Itan? Yeah, if you think the taste of Bihod is crazy, Papa Itan is crazier. Oh no, what have I done?
Before we take on Papa Itan, I'm warming up with some one of a kind Filipino food here at Lisa's Barbecue. We are at Lisa's Barbecue and I'm here right now with Lisa. Hi. We had to come here, especially after seeing many different unique food items you're serving here. A lot of students come here for dinner and internet cafe. So you have a joint business. That's amazing. Guys, it's a barbecue. Can you see that we're by the barbecue and there's smoke? It's visual storytelling. Right now, the fish eggs in my stomach are feeling lonely without fish sperm. But Lysa is here to fix all that. This is the bagay bay. Bagay bay is fish sperm. Fish sperm. In our Davao tuna video, we tried Yellowfin Restaurant's marinated and seared bagay bay. When you eat it, it's different. All right, let's yeah. see. I felt a lot of emotions. Here at Lysa's Barbecue, they start by chopping the sperm sack into manageable bite-sized pieces. Then a hurricane of sauces, starting with soy sauce, oyster sauce, mayo, MSG, salt, hot sauce, and pepper. This gets sauteed over hot oil, garlic, and onions. Finally, they toss it on a hot plate and we're ready for action. This is the sp fish sperm. sperm. Fish sperm, it's just hard for me to say. Okay. This is one of the many interesting foods you have here. So I'm just gonna fork it a bit, get a nice fork full of it. Oh, it's still steaming. Still let's go for it. The fish sperm. All right, let's go. Oh, it's not quite gooey, but it is soft. It's very tender. And there's just so many seasonings and spices on there. It's a great spice combination. I love that they serve it on that sizzling platter. Mm, this is much better than bihod. This one's very soft and the other one was, was very hard and kind of mm. crumbly, you know. We need those kind of polar opposites in nature. The masculine, the feminine, the Zing hard, yang. and the <laughs> gooey. Lysa's barbecue is a unique food factory. During one Red Horse-inspired evening, she created sizzling balut. People are hesitant to eat balut because you eat it raw. Yeah. But when there's sauce, it's like distracting you. Even though you're munching the head already, mm. it's like you're not munching the head at all. Balut are the 18 days developed duck fetuses. After they've been hard-boiled, they get the same sauce treatment as the bagaibai, sauteed on high heat, and finally plopped on a hot plate. <laughs> You thought you had seen every manifestation of cooking this developed fetus, but no. We brought it here on a hot plate and we're gonna try it out right now. Let's go for it. One, two, three. I like that you count me in. Mm. It's very good. That one part's really hard. It takes a lot of chewing. The white one is the mm -hmm. hardest part. It's like a pencil eraser, but the rest of it's really good. In my opinion with balloons is a little scary for some Westerners because it has eyes that have been developed. Don't look into those, just put it all in. You ate the balut without the cheek though. You only ate the yellow one and the white part. Oh man. Eat that too. I knew something was wrong. It was way too easy. Yeah. Scoop up some sauce, place it on the egg. Here we go. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I really like it. If you're freaked out about eating the plain balut, maybe this could be your training wheels right here. For dessert, pig brain soup. Starting with some sauteed veggies, including Chinese okra. After the veggies soften up, it's time for the brains. And finally, the noodles. It's a perfect soup for Halloween. Yeah, because it's orange and, and it's look, scary. This is a huge portion, by the way. You can see I have an entire brain. So guys, here it is. Are you gonna count me in? Yeah. One, two, three. There we go. Oh, that's nice. That's very savory. The brain itself is kind of gelatinous, soft. For some people, that texture, that consistency is a little off-putting, but the flavor itself, it's a little nutty, very savory. As someone who grew up in Mindanao though, what foods are weird to you? Was crocs. Wow, you look like you got some PTSD from that. Yeah, traumatic. Yeah, <laughs> let's have a little bit more brain. I'm getting some noodles in there. Bite time. Mmm. You like that fatty feeling? Yeah, I like the brain part because my mother told me when you eat that, you will get smart. That's true. If you eat eyes, you can see better. Yeah. If you eat a uh, brain, you can think better. Eat breast, you get breast better. Is that true? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, I thought maybe I've been eating too many. So what's our next food after this? It's goat poop. Really? Yeah. You better be scared. Okay, hold on, cut the camera really quick. Are we really gonna eat that? Yeah.
The time has come and I think I've finally met my match. Papa Itan, utilizing one of the most uncommon ingredients I've ever seen. It is a goat poop soup, yes? Yeah, it's the poop and somehow it's connected with the goat's intestine. The way you're describing it like it's a chocolate sundae. Yeah, it's like You're it's like, like no big dessert. deal. <laughs> this Carindaria specializes in all things goat. So right here, you can see she's scooping something up. What is this one? Caldereta, but it's oh. goat's meat. Goat meat made into a soup, a thick stew with gravy. Yeah, yeah. Is that good? Have you had that one? Yeah, caldereta is good. What is the secret, ma'am, to a good caldereta? She says that as long as the passion of cooking is good, the food is good. Oh, it's kind of poetic. I like that. Right here, there's a big old container of Papa Itan. It must be popular because there is a giant cauldron of that stuff right there. Today, I'm in luck because I'll get a chance to see exactly how they put this beauty together, starting with goat meat. That looks pretty good, actually. I can see a lot of innards, pieces of intestine. But right here, this is the real star of the show. That little kind of runny part, that is the actual poop, I think. It turns out the poop isn't really poop at all. It's actually bile. This is a bitter yellowish green juice extracted from the liver and stored in the gallbladder to aid in digestion. Patrons here can't get enough of its deep, bitter flavor. I'm gonna do the game we call, give it a sniff, why don't you? Put the lid back on. I don't think it wanted to be disturbed anyways. Papa Itan starts with a load of sauteed garlic, minced ginger, onion and tomato, and cubed goat meat and innards. Salt, the greenish bile. Oh my Lord. Quite a sight to see. A bit of pepper, 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 soy sauce, vinegar, green chilies, and beef seasoning. I can see there's tons of very strong flavors in here. Spring onion, and finally, intestine. Oh, there it is. It's not gonna be chopped up or anything. It's just gonna be like some big noodles in there. Add more water and let it boil about 20 minutes. Last, a sprinkling of MSG. We got a bunch of food here, some vinegar here. If we want a little bit of vinegar on our, our food, I want to work my way up to the poop soup. What is this one called again? Caldereta and kambing. Kambing is goat. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's try out some of this. Okay, let's try it together. One, two, three. Mmm. Oh, that's delicious. The meat is very tender. I like that a lot. That actually is reasonably refreshing for a goat on a hot day. Mmm. Delicious. This is the goat the adobo. adobo. Adobo is like one of the national dishes of the Philippines, but I've never had it with goat. Let's try it. A little bit tough, but some nice seasonings coming off there. Soy sauce and garlic, especially. I've been putting it off as long as possible, but here is the moment. The whole reason we came here, it's for this hoop soup. Mmm, it does, it's very bitter smelling, kind of grassy. Here, I'm gonna pour it on top of my rice. Get some of that broth on there. And don't be shy. People at home, they really want to see how far you can take this. A little bit of everything in here. We got some innards, some rice, some of those juices soaking into the rice. Let's go for it. It's bitter, <laughs> but it's good. Uh, What's your comment about it, son? Strong. The bile taste in there is so intense. It's very bitter. It's very similar to the one that I had in, in Thailand. Oh, you put like a busload of bile in there. This tastes like pure bile. Mm. Oh, you gotta taste it with alcohol. <laughs> is it supposed to taste like that? Yeah, it's natural papa eaten. Look, and the only way I can understand this is if you love bitter foods, then bam, this is for you all the way, homie. I'm gonna get some straight up broth right yeah. now. Here we go, let's try out just a broth. It makes us do that. Can you taste the grassiness in there? For me, it's just plain bitter. Is there anything you would add to this to make it less bitter? Would you put in some of this calamansi? You can, you can actually. I'm fine with all the offals and organs. It's just that broth with all that strong acidic, kind of yeah. strong bitterness in there is what gets me. But let's try it with some of that calamansi juice. Here we go. I change a little bit, but it still does have this like very animal-y taste to it. People like this because it's weird. At the same time, it's daring. If you're uh, an adventurous kind of person, so this soup is for you. 
man, that is a thrill ride for the taste buds. That is a roller coaster for the old mouth. That's a haunted hayride for the old pie hole. It's all those things in one. Ellen, thank you so much for joining thank you me so today. Much. Thank you, thank you. What an adventure. And guys, next time you're out and about and traveling to new places, push your mouth and your taste buds to the edges of their limits, explore the fringes of food possibility, and try something new. I think it's okay to be a little apprehensive as long as you go in with an open heart and an even more open mouth. For you guys, this video was made possible by One Trip Vietnam. One Trip is the highest rated tour company in Vietnam, doing tours from north to south. Right now in Hanoi, Da Nang, Hoi An, and Saigon, you can experience food tours, adventure tours, and more. For more information on One Trip, check out the links in the description down below. I will see you next time. Peace. Peace. Kai, you know, people say I never feed you any food, which I think is like they don't see it, but do you want some? You know, he's, why are you shaking your head? No. <laughs> Kai, I'm offering you food. People think that I don't offer. It's right here, man. Just open up your mouth. Open up. Open up. Make it right. Just let me touch you like the first time.